Now we need to talk about what is true hormone optimization versus what is testosterone therapy. Six years ago, I have been uh, on subclinical physiological levels of uh, free and total testosterone since uh, 2017. And um, then we started immediately for myself on uh, DHA and uh, pregnenolone as well. Uh, but then I learned a ton from Dave Lee. That's why I think of it. And uh, he says not to start uh, just like that without having any symptoms. So the burning question for me was to ask you again. Okay. Well, that's where Dave and I, we're going to do a video on this too. I do believe because we need to circle back on that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now we need to talk about what is true hormone optimization versus what is testosterone therapy. Now, Dave, after we talked last time, it, we came to the conclusion that we're treating, we're talking about two different populations of men. He's treating men and they're are talking about men in their 20s, early 30s. Me and you are middle-aged and older men. It's a, what is hormone optimization? Hormone optimization is preventing that age-related decline in hormones. So I'm going to disagree with Dave on DHEA, pregnant, and all those things. I've got all the studies on each one of those as well. But when we're treating middle-aged and older men, understand that all hormones have beneficial effects. Okay, they work synergistically, but each hormone has beneficial effects. The goals of what we do are to maximize the beneficial effects of each hormone by optimizing levels. That's what hormone optimization is. It's about preventing any age-related disease, disability, dependence, or frailty. It's not waiting until we get a disorder or a disease before we start treating. It's not waiting until we get symptoms of a deficiency before we start supplementing. The problem for those younger men is that they cannot discern between feel-good effects and beneficial effects. Now, before we talk about this with regard to pregnant alone or DHEA and those things, let's understand this. Let's set some ground rules here. Stephen, can you take Tylenol? Not a trick question. Can you take Tylenol for a headache? Bother you to take Tylenol? I, I, I've, ne I've never taken it, really. Well, have you ever taken? Well, tell me something that you've taken over the counter just for uh, a headache I, or cold. I, or I, 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 ibuprofen. Okay, so you can take ibuprofen, right? So can I. So when we talk about what we're about to say, we're speaking to the masses that have no problem taking a dose of ibuprofen or two or whatever for, for inflammation or whatever we may have going on. Mm -hmm. We're not going to speak to those guys because there's always that guy that's going to, you know, speak up and say, well, I can't take because I got this. We're talking about the 99% of people that can take it. We're not referring to you guys that are that 1% outlier that can't even take Tylenol or ibuprofen. The majority of all of us can either take Tylenol or ibuprofen without any problems, but there's going to be some people that say, I can't take Tylenol because I get a headache. So we're talking about the majority of people, all right? So hormones that exert the most feel-good effects, the two that have the greatest impact on how we feel, function, perform, and our overall health are going to be testosterone and thyroid. I can literally base my adjustments on symptomatic improvement, not necessarily levels. Of course, we follow levels. Those are your two really feel-good hormones. The other hormones like vitamin D, DHEA, pregnant, they don't have significant feel good effects. Yes, sir. That's good about the make a comment out there that, well, I feel it when I, I'm not talking about you. We're talking about the majority of people that take it. There's not significant feel good effects from it. All right. But we take it for its beneficial effects. All right. That's why we're that's why we're raising levels. And once again, we're talking about treating middle aged and older men with hormones, not guys in their teens and early 30s necessarily. Remember, testosterone therapy is just that, testosterone therapy. Guy in his teens, 20s, early 30s, probably fine just getting along with just testosterone therapy. But for middle-aged and older men, it becomes about hormone optimization because we don't want to wait till we get symptoms of a deficiency of DHE or anything else. We want to prevent the deficiency. This is about prevention not just about treating when you get sick. So we don't want to fall into that trap. Don't take pregnenolone, Steve, until you get a deficiency of pregnenolone. Steve, don't take, don't take DHEA until you feel bad because you don't have enough DHEA. Prevent that from occurring. So like DHEA, it can stimulate your immune system, improve memory, it can increase energy, has anti-cancer properties, it can improve mood and help with depression. It can reduce your cardiovascular risk by decreasing visceral body fat and therefore lower hypertension cholesterol in some men. It reduces insulin requirements, protects against osteoporosis, improves erectile dysfunction, protects against muscle atrophy, and protects against inflammation. In fact, it's used to treat lupus, which you know, they've used it for lupus. The goal is the better the levels, the better the benefits. And the goal of all of what we do 
is to maximize the beneficial effects of each and every hormone at middle age and older. We're not talking about Dave Lee's crowd of guys in their teens and 20s, maybe early 30s. We're talking about us older guys. We're maximizing the beneficial effects and balancing between avoiding any unwanted side effects. That's all it is, just a simple balancing act. And it's just some people could take more DHEA than others. Pregnenolone, testosterone, thyroid, all of that. So that's really what this is about is I am about hormone optimization for middle-aged men and women as they age for preventive purposes. Okay. Right. So, it's about the, so the younger crowd has a little bit different, you know, uh, mentality and it's a little bit different treatment. Of course, they're not suffering necessarily from signs of a, all their hormones de deficient at this point in time. But whenever you do treat a middle aged and older men with these hormones, very few of them have any so-called side effects. Okay. Very few. Yeah. The side effect you're going to get for DHE is going to be acne that we see in men and women. Just lower the dose to dose they could tolerate. Happens with me. I have to take a lower dose, you know, than I, than I wish I could, but still nonetheless, I do supplement with it. So I just wanted to, you know, Dave Lee is right about his crowd that, that he, and he's first, first as I, as he and I were talking, is that look, I, that's, I treat guys that are in their twenties and, you know, maybe your thirties and you're treating these older people. And that's right. And another mistake that is made out there is that many men don't really understand that symptoms of low thyroid are almost identical to those of low testosterone in many areas. So many men that are out there getting treated with testosterone still feel no better in certain areas. Well, it's because they're throwing testosterone is actually a thyroid problem or a thyroid problem as well. So that's why we optimize them all. That's why we're treating for symptomatic improvement. See, I'm glad you brought that question up. Yep, Dave does a great job on all those, but but he's not he's not talking about the population of men that 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 I predominantly treat, and that's a totally different population of men. Sure, I agree, and um, I'm still taking the pregnenolone and the DHEA. Oh, we, start, we started you on that a long time ago, so good for you, good for you. Never changed the winning team. Good, 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 good. We'll see. I mean, it's just about sometimes the devil's in the details. And so Dave and I, like I said, I think he's put out good content, but I think that I was going to tell Dave next, I'm talking, Dave, you need to make sure you, you, you be very specific. Like, look, I'm, this is the crowd that I'm really talking about because when we look at the studies where we're using pregnenolone and DHEA and, and older men and women, we don't have the problems that he's reporting that these younger men have. Okay. We, we don't see that. Okay. All right, Keith, that was some excellent information. Thank you so much for doing this again. You're welcome, buddy. I hope you got what you needed out of it. Sure thing. So we'll, we'll circle back around with estradiol, of course. And like I said, I, one of my interests in my practice is, of course, prostate cancer. Why? Because I'm at high risk for it for family history. So I take it very seriously. Uh, I have many men that I treat that I, that have prostate cancer or have been treated for prostate cancer. So the history of uh, testosterone prostate cancer is fascinating. Men, all men should know about it and understand why they were deprived for decades unnecessarily. Okay. Let viewers know how to contact you if they want to reach out. Tier1HW.com. So that's all you need to do. Tier1HW.com. Okay. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you so much, Pete. You got it, man. Thank you, Stephen.